Hey friend, uh, got to thinking that with it being the holidays and you probably have your little one at home or little ones and they're probably driving you crazy, bouncing off of the walls. So I thought I would share a video that I had done uh, at the beginning of quarantine for uh, the families that I was working with at the time on one of my favorite activities, which is a sensory bin. And in the video, I'll talk a little bit about all the develop, developmental benefits of using a sensory bin and ways to use it to uh, work on language and motor skills and self-help skills and all of the things. So I thought I'd share that with you this week, thinking that maybe it would uh, be something that you could pull out when your little ones are driving you crazy or you just need them to chill out for a little bit. Great activity for that. So I hope you find it helpful. Good morning everybody, this is Jill. I'm uh, gonna go over today an activity that you can do with your kids while you're down on uh, quarantine. I was sitting there trying to think about being at home with young kids and maybe older elementary or high school kids and uh, how to keep those little ones occupied besides screen time in a way where they can be doing something productive and learning but also allow for some quiet time for the older kids while they're studying. Studying. So what I did is I pulled out my trusty rice box. Um, knowing that getting out to the store is not an easy thing, most folks have somewhere in their house a bin, um, and most folks have some uncooked rice at their house, or maybe you can do it with beans. I like rice, I think it feels a little bit better. Um, so yeah, this is a rice box, and um, there's a number of benefits to having a rice box. It's considered sensory play. Sensory play is calming for kids. So when they have their hands busy, their feet don't need to be, right? So it's easier to sometimes keep some of those busier movers and shakers occupied for a little bit longer when they're doing activities that involve their hands. I don't remember, know if you remember sitting in the um, sandbox when you were a kid, but we would be out there for hours and it's just sand, some cups, some spoons, some trucks, maybe a few little figures. Um, we would be there for hours, just like when kids go to the beach. So there's something just really calming and relaxing about having our hands in, in something like this. Um, and there's a lot of opportunities to work on motor skills and language, um, as well as it being that calming and focusing activity. So all you need to do is get yourself a, a bin Pull one out of the cupboard, empty it out. Um, it doesn't have to be this big. I like this size personally, and I do like Rubbermaid because they don't crack like some of the cheaper brands. Um, and get yourself a couple of bags of beans. I just went to the Dollar Tree a while back and bought like four bags, four or five bags of, be of uh, rice. Um, like I said, you can use beans. Um, but uh, then you just fill it with some different objects. You know, you don't have to go out and buy special things to do this activity. You can just pull toys from around the house, okay? Um, some tips before I go through kind of what I got in here. You wanna make sure that you do this on the floor. Normally I do it on the floor, but it wasn't easy to figure out a shot with the video to do that. I normally uh, put down a big blanket underneath it so that if some rice does spill out of the box, that I can just pour it back in. Um, you want to Try to um, tell them the kids what you want instead of what you don't want. We don't want to say, don't throw the rice, don't throw the rice, because don't means do to a two-year-old. So instead, what you want to say is the rice stays in the box. The toys stay in the box. We play over the box. So we try to keep the kids and their hands over the box. Um, you want to have some rules around it. If they do get a little bit crazy and start to throw things, I kind of use the three strikes and you're out. Oh, we're going to have to be done. If we, if we can't keep the race in the box, we're going to have to be done. Um, there's some things that you can do positioning wise that can help facilitate keeping the kids um, with their hands over the box. Like one thing I like to do uh, is turn the box this way and then have the kids kind of straddle the box, either as a corner or this way, depending on how flexible they are and then uh, have the parent sit behind their child and kind of have their arms like this so it makes it easier for the kids to keep their arms over the box. It's not uncommon for kids as they're using things to have one hand in and one hand out and they'll switch back and forth. It's kind of a, a reflex that they're born with and it takes some time to diminish but we actually want to get to the point where they're doing more midline play and using those hands together but it kind of helps you can be back there and kind of nudge those elbows in to help them keep 
the things over the box. Um, so I've just got a variety of different objects in here. You can um, you can focus on particular things if you want. Like I've got some pretend play foods in here, carrots and cheese. You can focus on animals if you're working on noises with the kids, like barking and winking and things like that. Um, the nice thing about this box too is that this activity can actually grow with your kids and their skills so that as kids get older and they're moving on to preschool and kindergarten, you can work on letter recognition by putting fridge, fridge letters in here. You can work on phonics by talking about the sounds. You can put like a cat or a dog in here and have them find the letters to dog. So there's a lot of different activities that you can do with this. Um, you can also, besides some of the things that I have in here, uh, you can also get, get out some picture cards, you know, if you're working on different things with kids and toss them in there uh, and have them try to find them. So this activity covers a variety of different developmental needs. So one is positioning, right? So for some of the kids who are struggling with tall kneeling, you can work with them on tall kneeling next to the, the, the box. For kids who have lower muscle tone, just getting them to sit, like I was talking about before, straddling the box, a lot of times they're kind of hunched over. It gives them a chance to start working on some core strength. You're also working on fine motor skills by doing this activity. Having these scoops in here, right, and trying to scoop things in and out, or having some cups so that they can pour things in and out, you're actually working on um, developing the muscles and the coordination and the hands and the wrist that they're gonna need for writing their names later on, for using scissors. It also can be helpful to work with self-feeding, right? You, learning how to use those spoons. So you're working on some motor skills there from a language standpoint. First of all, you can work on receptive language by working on identifying common or familiar objects. So, you know, if you're thinking about like, what are some things that my child doesn't seem to recognize around the house that I really would like him to be able to do, for example, shoes, right? You can find some Barbie doll shoes. Um, you could take a baby shoe if you want and put it in here. Somewhere in here I've got a boot from a Barbie doll set. But you can say, where's the shoe? And try to move some of the other objects out of the way. So, Oh, there it is. So they could be a little bit more successful. So that maybe if you're asking, where's the shoe, right? All we have out is a dog and a shoe for the child to see and we're kind of blocking the rest because it's hard for them to tune all that stuff out. You know, and if they don't find the shoe, we say, there's the shoe, try to get their attention. Always remember to follow their lead. If they're like, I'm not interested in what you're saying right now because I'm so busy exploring, let them explore. So anyhow, you can work with them on identifying objects. Uh, depending on where their, their receptive language is, you can work on following directions. Like, can you feed the dog? Feed the dog. You can also work on concepts and prepositions like put the dog in the cup, take the dog out of the cup. You can work on size concepts. Where's the big dog? Where's the little dog? So it gives you a lot of different options. Uh, from an expressive language standpoint, you can work on naming things, obviously. What is this? Dog. What is this? Pig. You can um, work on sounds. So let's say that uh, you're working on P sounds with your child because they're struggling with that. You know, I've got a pink box. I've got a pig. Um, I've got a pony. So you can target specific sounds if you want. So there's just a variety of different benefits that you can get from using a rice box. Um, one more rule that you have to have is make sure that your kids know they may not lay down in the rice box or the sensory bin. We don't want any rice or beans or anything like going, going in their little ears. Um, so yeah, that's it in a nutshell. I will be uploading a handout that I made a while back that kind of goes over some of the things that we talked about with the benefits and some different activities and ways that you can use a rice box for your child for learning. So I hope you find this helpful. Please make sure that if you have thoughts or feedback uh, that you leave some comments down in the comment section. Well, there you go. So now you have an activity for those times when you need your kids to kind of calm down. Uh, and this is a great activity to do during these cold winter days or on those rainy days when they can't get outside and they're bouncing off of the walls. So I hope you found that helpful. It was one of my kids' favorite activities to do when they were younger. Uh, okay, so I did also mention in that video a handout um, that talks a little bit more about the rice box. 
and uh, sensory activities. If you are interested in uh, getting a copy of that handout, just go ahead and click on the link below and I'll get that right in the mail to you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if you have any other questions, comments, suggestions, drop them in the comments below. All right, you guys, till next time.